My name is Nancy Michael. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Studies for the Neuroscience and Behavior major here at the University of Notre Dame and the College of Science. I was asked to talk a little bit about implicit bias, but more specifically, the neural mechanisms that underlie implicit bias. So what we're seeing here is a human brain. This is a functional magnetic resonance imaging picture. So what it monitors is blood flow. So people are put into an MRI machine, they're given a particular task to do, and the fMRI, or the functional magnetic resonance imaging, monitors changes in blood flow based on activity of particular regions of the brain. Here we have the front end of the brain, this is the back end of the brain, or the anterior posterior aspects. We're right down the midline, so it's in the middle. This part right here that's in red uh, is the medial prefrontal cortex, ventral medial prefrontal cortex. Here over here is the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex. And what a large body of work now demonstrates is that we, when we process information about a group of people that we perceive as similar or an in-group, similar to ourselves, we use parts of our brain, the ventral medial aspects of our prefrontal cortex and other regions of our brain, that we use when we make decisions about ourselves. So when we make decisions about ourselves, we approach these decisions without a lot, a lot, a lot of understanding, a lot of empathy, a lot of compassion, a lot of awareness of history and future and long-term effects. The more dissimilar or other we see someone, the more we process information about making decisions about that person with the dorsal aspects of our prefrontal cortex. We don't see them as self, we see them as non-self. And so it's a much more cognitive, much more um, deliberative kind of problem solving, right? And when you put this in the context of how we process overall information, all of these processes, whether we're processing similar or dissimilar information, falls into this hidden realm. We still have our sensory input coming in, we have hidden processing that takes place, and then again we have some type of behavioral output. But as you can imagine, where someone falls or where a group of people falls along this similar, dissimilar, in-group, out-group spectra can make a large difference in the output that we have. And this informs then when we're thinking about implicit bias and we're thinking about working with, with people from any and every walk of life. It really informs kind of this systems individual approach. When we think about implicit bias, we need to be aware of what is happening in ourselves. We all know when we have reactions that make us uncomfortable. Right? We don't necessarily need to understand the experience that we've had that has generated this, this feeling. Right? And generally speaking, implicit bias comes from the experiences that we have not had as opposed to the experiences that we have had. Right? When we have not had experience with a group of people, that little bit of information, that news blippet that we hear, that demonizes or that frightens, can populate our entire neural network when making decisions about people that we may see every day or people that we may cross on the street. This creates, this social system, right, creates our, many of our implicit biases. So the environment in which we're fostered and raised, have, they're kind of intrinsic to this environment, we will have implicit bias, right? As we participate in social systems, we're social, shaped by the socialization and the path of least resistance within that social system. And these social systems then create us as individuals. And this is where we have the power because it's ultimately individuals that make the social systems happen. So if we can recognize in ourselves where we have these implicit biases, because we all have them, it's just a matter of recognizing them. If we can recognize within ourselves, we can come together as individuals to stand up for the change in a social system that needs to happen. If enough of us are ready to do that work and have those hard conversations, we then can shift the direction of the social system. It's like changing the current of a river. The, the current in a river can be very, very strong and the path of least resistance is often easiest, but it's not always right. And we have neuroscientific evidence now that demonstrates where implicit bias comes from, that it's kind of this universal thing. And so we need to start having those hard conversations and we need to be introspective. So taking a moment to recognize, we, we might not know it, but we can feel it. And then taking a step back to say, wait a second, 
what's going on with me right now? Why am I reacting this way? Why am I behaving this way? And then take a second maybe to imagine that person that you're having this reaction to as someone more similar to yourself and see how your behavior changes, right?